Terra Numina. Well, it comes in very handy today because that's exactly what flat earthers don't believe in. Okay, in fact, I would say 99% of humanity doesn't believe in noumena. Okay, this word was invented by Immanuel Kant, and Kant maybe. Uh, and what he said is that uh, some objects we can touch and see, but others we can't. They are objects you can say of the mind. Okay, we can imagine them, we can visualize them maybe, and they're only in, in the mind, okay? And so uh, you got to think about that because people say, well, if it's in the mind, it doesn't exist. Well, not necessarily, see, because you can make an assumption about an object that you cannot see or touch, which is what Newman is all about. And you can say, well, you know, what if there's an object you cannot see and touch that mediates gravity, that mediates inertia, that mediates mass? Okay, so that's the issue. So let's go with Mr. Kant, uh, Kant, see what he says. And these are summaries of essentially of his main points. He says, Numina, objects of the understanding okay, that can be given an intuition, although not to, uh, not to, to uh, sensible intuition. In other words, sensible meaning um, senses. Okay? So they're given to intuition, but not to the senses. And the comment that you'll find in the um, uh, Stanford Encyclopedia is clearly we do not rec uh, co uh, co cognize any noumena since to cognize an object for us requires intuition and our intuition is sensible, not intellectual. Okay, so they're saying that, or at least uh, whoever wrote that uh, piece says that uh, they cannot imagine even uh, something like noumena existing because uh, intuition doesn't work through the mind. Intuition works through our senses, and phenomena are related to senses, and noumena are not, and so that like automatically disqualifies them. That's more or less the the argument there. Okay, um, uh, that's one take on that. What did Mr. Kant conclude? Um, essentially, this is a summary again of his conclusions, right? We know the noumenal word, uh, world to exist because human sensibility is merely receptive. In other words, when you touch, when you see, okay, that's receptive. That depends on the individual, on the observer, right? However, it is not itself sensible, the noumena, right? And must therefore remain otherwise unknowable to us. So they're, they're talking about the unknowable uh, noumenon. Right now, we're, we're looking at two things. On the one hand, they're saying, look, phenomena is that which you can see and touch, whereas noumena, you can't see or touch. It's there, or at least you posit that it's there, but it's unknowable. And again, they use this word know, which no one ever defined. In other words, you don't believe in it because that's what knowledge is, belief. Okay, so this is where the problem comes in. They introduce words or situations that have no bearing on the issue before us. Are there objects that we cannot see or touch? Are there phenomena that we cannot see or touch? That's the question. Okay, so um, here we have, let me get this one out of here, um, uh, the definition that we find at the Wikipedia after, this is after, I mean, you're talking about, I think, 1781 that um, uh, Kant wrote the Critique of Reason, okay? And here's, um, here's what uh, we've come up with after 200, 300 years uh, since that book. Noumenon, object or event that exists. Big problem there. We can say that an object can exist. We cannot say that an event exists, a happening exists, an occurrence existing. Okay, what do you mean when you say that an event exists? So big problem there already. But it says object or event that exists independently of human sense and or perception. You cannot uh, expect to sense this with your eyes, with your hands, with your ears, with your smell, nothing. Okay, you can't sense these objects known as noumena, uh, plural, uh, noumenon, uh, singular. Uh, but you look up the word object. It says object or event that exists independently of human sense, right, a or perception. Object, a thing observed. Of course, if you're going to define object as a thing observed, and again, that's a definition that the Wikipedia uh, links, right? Uh, if, if a thing is that which can be observed, then that automatically rules out noumena because you cannot observe it by definition. So we have a contradiction already there, okay? And uh, it continues there and says, objects may not have real existence independent of the subject who observes. Again, introducing the observer, the, the person who is kind of the judge, <laughs> so to speak, right? Uh, at issues whether objects can exist independently of their properties. And again, they put the word exist always with the word object, okay? It's like they cannot separate the word object from the word exist. 
Okay, and by that I mean that if object is that which is observed, meaning see, touch, exist is also by default see, touch. That's what it amounts to. You look up the word event because it's object or event that exists. You look up the word event and it, and it says it's a phenomenon. So events are phenomena. You look at phenomena, it says an observable event. <laughs> Typical of mathematicians. They never learn how to define keywords. So they go around in circles. You never know what they say because they never define their language, the key language with which they have to make their case. So we haven't learned anything from these people at the Wikipedia, and that is essentially a summary of what people know out there, the, the state-of-the-art knowledge of uh, the scientific world. In, in many ways, it's condensed in there. Okay, maybe not in fine detail, but it gives you an overview, and this is where they're at. Uh, they haven't defined any keyword. They don't know what exist means. They don't know what an object is. They don't know what distance or location is. They don't have a definition for any of these words that form the foundations of physics. Okay, um, what do the mathematicians consider noumena? Okay, the mathematicians, as I call them. Okay, uh, this is magic, math magic. They say, a, uh, essentially, right, noumena are unobservable. You cannot observe them. And, of course, mathematics does not uh, vouch too much. They don't care too much about stuff that they cannot observe, meaning see, touch. And so they think that this stuff belongs only to philosophy. Okay? So if there are objects that we cannot see or touch out there, we can't see the air, right? We can't see the chair, the uh, Australian sitting on the other side of the uh, planet or, or touch it, right? So we have a problem. First of all, is it an object? Does it exist? And mathematicians don't go that far. They just worry about their little world just like the flat earthers. So we don't have an answer to those questions. Obviously, the definition, the seat touch definition, the criteria used to define uh, uh, objects and existence, it's irrational. You can't use those definitions in science. We need to redefine all those words because they do form the foundations of physics. Okay, so um, this is my take on that. You have to define these two words, object and exist. What is an object? That which has shape. What is exist? Well, it has to have location. What is location? The set of distances to all other objects. Okay, so in order to exist, we have to have all other objects in the universe. That's essentially it. See, if God wants to exist, God first has to be an object, a thing. And there you can see that uh, looks like God is a thing because God has shape. As I see a shape there. Okay, so uh, uh, God seems to meet the criteria of the definition of object. So God is a thing, but that's not enough to exist. If God wants to exist, also has to have distance with respect to all objects that exist. Okay, There's got to be a straight line of direction from God to me. I don't care where he wishes, what dimension he wishes to hide in. So, uh, yeah, uh, that's the definition. That definition we can take to the bank. Okay? We can use that definition. And if uh, an object has that which has shape and exists means an object that has location, now we can apply these definitions consistently to talk rationally, not like the flat earthers and all other people out there like the math magicians who go out there and start talking about object and exist without defining those two words. And they use those words constantly, all of these people. Okay? They use them constantly, but they never define them. All you find in the dictionary are, in the case of exist, are synonyms. And in the case of object, the main one is see and touch. That's what all these people believe in, or that's the notion that they have in the back of their brains. Okay, so here let me give you an object that um, is invisible and intangible, okay, but it is an object, and it's my uh, electromagnetic rope. Electromagnetic rope is a noumenon, okay, it's, a, it's part of the noumena that's out there, okay. The mediator of light and gravity, it's invisible and intangible. It's a DNA-like pair of twine threads. We call it the electromagnetic rope because it has the architecture of a rope. Not because it's a rope that you buy at the hardware store, but because it has the DNA-like uh, architecture. That's the only reason we call it a rope. Okay? So people go bonkers over the word rope, and they say, well, what do you mean it's a rope? What is it made out of? And then they start with all the nonsense questions. No, it's a, it ha whatever's out there has the architecture of a rope, meaning a pair of twine threads. It torques. When it torques, uh, we call that light. Okay? And uh, yeah, because we can't see it or touch it, we have no chance of discovering it through an experiment. Okay, all we can do is visualize it, and uh, that's why it's a noumenon because it's a product of the mind. You make an assumption. It's not that you believe in it. It's it's an assumption. That's what it's called in science. Okay, you make an assumption, say, let us assume that all atoms are physically interconnected by the electromagnetic rope, a noumenon, something that you cannot see or touch. 
That's the starting point. It's an assumption. That's known as an assumption. You posit it. Okay, so now with that, you can say, okay, what is light? Well, if the atom expands and contracts, it torques the rope and the torsion that propagates along the rope, which is really the torsion uh, in situ torsion of that uh, rope. That's what we call light. So we have the object, which is the rope, and what it does, the torsion. And together we call that light. That's how simple it is. Okay, That's the proposal. Do you believe it? We don't care if you do or not. Uh, belief is for churches. Okay, Science we explain so that you understand. Once you understand, we draw the line. You cross the line, you're into religion. You're talking about belief, whether you uh, uh, pray to it or whatever. That's, that's your personal business. It doesn't concern science at all. Okay, what are some of the rejoinders that people raise against noumena, such as the electromagnetic rope? Okay, here it is. Uh, I can't see them. <laughs> that's irrelevant. Uh, how can I detect them? That's irrational. Why is it irrelevant and irrational? Because noumena, that which you can't see or touch. So why ask a question about see, touch, when that's not the definition of noumena, which is an object that you cannot see or touch? And uh, always I ask the same question there. Why didn't you ask that question to quantum mechanics? I mean, can you see the particles that they're talking about when they say, oh, the photon, the electron, the muon, uh, pion, and all these other particles, the gluon, right? Did you ever ask them, can you see or touch them? Oh, then they're not particles because I can't see your time. They're not objects, right? But see, people accept them. They say particles, and people say, oh, okay, I understand that. It's a little ball. And nobody takes it any further than that. They accept quantum mechanics blindly. Okay? They say, yeah, okay, it's a little ball there that does this and that. We call this one a photon. The other one is the uh, electron ball. The other one's the gluon ball. They're all balls. Okay? And you never ask them, can you see or touch them? Okay? So why do you ask me if I can see or touch the rope, if I'm saying it's a noumenon, you can't see or touch it by definition, but you ask the question, and you don't ask the question in quantum mechanics. Okay? And you see or touch space-time. Okay? Again, uh, take that to relativity, and so on. Okay, so a thing is that which has shape, not that which you can see or touch. So, end of story there. How can it have shape if you can't see or touch it? Uh, how do you know it has shape? And the answer is, congratulations, you just made the idiot honor roll. Can you prove their existence? Numina, right? Proof is religion. Proof is in the pudding. Proof is what uh, alcohol has. Okay. Religion, uh, that's what uh, proof has to do with. It's uh, opinion, belief, truth, persuade, convince, convert, recruit, knowledge, evidence. All that has to do with religion. We don't, we don't try to convert people. We don't try to prove. We don't try to present evidence. Okay? You can if you want, but that's not science. Science is mechanism in phys as, as it relates to physics. And uh, the electromagnetic rope essentially explains light and gravity. That's, that's the purpose of positing that there is an electromagnetic rope, a, a noumena out there, a noumenon, okay, that we're going to use to explain a mechanism so that you understand it, not so that you believe it, okay, so that you can try to visualize and say, well, is this how the universe works, okay, so it's food for thought, okay, and people say, well, I don't believe in it, I don't care, that's irrelevant if you believe or not.